on the iPad. Three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Leave meaning okay to that. Uh, let's see. Um, the button on the upper right hand. Lord, we thank you for love us for dying to set us free. We thank you for Holy Week. We thank you that you are preparing our way uh, to transform us so we can make a difference. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, give me one second here. Here we go. There we have. All right. Good morning, one and all. Welcome, welcome to our Mid Cape Bible study. Pastor Matt is in Boston and uh, will be joining us remotely. Um, surgery went well, I understand, and that's a blessing and a half. We'd love to hear that. Um, tell we're going to be picking up today in uh luke chapter 21 and uh 13 will be new material i'd like to backtrack just into the previous verses to get a, a kind of a rolling start on this get the context right so starting in verse uh, 10 for a quick read uh this we talked about yesterday okay this is with uh the, the lord talking with the disciples about um end time events is what this comes down to okay so Luke 21, 10, and we're in the uh, CSB, uh, Christian Standard Bible today. Then he, Jesus, told them, nation will be raised up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be violent earthquakes and famines and plagues in various places. And there will be terrifying sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay ha their hands on you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons, and you'll be brought before kings and governors because of my name. Sorry. This will give you, but the, okay, so new material begins here, verse 13. First of all, oh, whoa, whoa, what happened there? Here we go. Whoop. Sorry. <laughs> A bad click. Here we go back to 21 and down to 30. Here we are. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just to recap, this is essentially, if you look at it carefully, um, a recapping of uh, or a refer reference to uh, Revelation and the Four Horsemen. We're talking about false Christs and so forth, and uh, wars, rumors of wars, and so forth. Uh, we'll see that come up as a uh, a theme uh, developed shortly. So beginning at verse 13 now, we're starting uh, new material for verse 13. So Luke 21, 13, CSB. This will give you an opportunity to bear witness. All of this calamity you should look at as an opportunity to bear witness. Unfortunately, we were totally sold out last night. Is somebody tuning into us or what's happening? I hear a little audio. I've got, I'm in the whole hotel lobby. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So for verse 14, therefore, make up your minds not to prepare for your defense ahead of time. For I will give you such words and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. Okay, so it's important that um, look at this this period of calamity as an opportunity to witness, and surely it will be. People will be scattered everywhere and uh, running around with hair hair on fire, so to speak. Uh, yep. it would be very difficult. So time when people are sensitive to um, spiritual things. That's true. And yeah. one of the things that happens in a time like that is your you're preparing every day, though you aren't preparing particularly for a particular um, judgment or encounter. You're in the word every day. You're in prayer every day. You're in worship every day. So the stuff just comes out of you, um, not scripted, but just by the spirit. Right. Yeah. So continuing on. Now, these are some of the toughest verses, verses I think, in the entire New Testament coming up. 
Um, but the whole idea is the Lord is preparing us, giving an understanding of just uh, what all this is going to mean to us. And here is verse 16. Here's a start of it. You will even be betrayed by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. They will kill some of you. You will be hated by everyone because of my name. Okay. So some people think this may be addressed only to Jews. But of course, these would be mess. But uh, virtually anybody with the name of Christ is a target here, and right. that would be Christians, of course. So uh, we have to be uh, 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 awake to the ideas that this persecution, simply because we bear the name of the Lord, uh, is uh, in the for in the foreground. Something coming our way, and it's something that is available today. If you read. Voice of the Martyrs or any of that, you just have, it's not like, oh, a long time from now this will happen, but it's happening. Right. Yeah. Um, we're still in the um, the beginning of uh, the uh, tumultuous times here. That's right. Picking up in 17, you'll be hated by everyone because of my name. Again, yep. name, but not a hair of your head will be lost by your endurance Gain your lives. It's a great phrase right there. Yes. That is not to say your, your salvation is de uh, dependent on this per se. Uh, but, uh, you know, those of you alive at this period, you have to, uh, 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 you've got to expect this kind of um, persecution to come your way. That's um, right. This is a way to secure uh, your life to to realize that uh, your okay. your life is in Christ. Period, and what That's happens right. here is temporary, and it all passes. That's right. And but also, the you know, in troubling times, you can try and hide under your bed, or you can look up and say, "I wonder who's going to get saved today." Uh, how do you you know? If we take every every bad day as an opportunity for goodness, then you know it's pretty amazing. Sure. I was in the hospital yesterday and I, uh, I had a, a colonel in the bed next to me. And he was, um, when he was in the war, his, he, he works for MIT doing their sub stuff, uh, sub guidance stuff. So he's, he's three days in the army drafted and his sergeant comes by and says, I don't know who you know, but you're not here anymore. You're a colonel now. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> What an incredible, but obviously, if you're working on subs and guidances, it's more important that you do that than carry a rifle. So, you know, and I told him I was a pastor and he said, you know, so they opened the, the slider between us and he said to his daughter, that's my pastor. <laughs> so amazing in the midst of hospital to be able to, uh, to, to really hear somebody's story and their suffering too. Sure. Yep. Um. Now move on to the uh, destruction of Jerusalem. Now again, this we talked about this yesterday uh, briefly. Both this and the Matthew accounts are very, very similar. These discourses uh, referred to as the Olivet Discourse. Some people blend them. Some people keep the, see that there are differences. There is one distinct difference between the two. Um, and we'll get to that as we, um, we uh, cover this material. But uh, the, the, the overall structure here is to talk about uh, the near destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus is speaking this around uh, 30 AD, circa 30 AD, 33, somewhere in there. And um, he's he's really calling um, uh, a prophecy here for the destruction in 70 AD. Right. But at the same time, he overlaps this, uh, this uh, particular message for that destruction with... Uh, the end of time destruction, which occurs uh, with Armageddon. That's right. But, so, but we, because the Lord Jesus owns time, time does not own the Lord Jesus, that for him to speak of 40 years from now and 2,000 years from now in the same breath isn't a hardship. Yeah. For, makes us cuckoo, but it's not a hardship for him because he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't time out the same way we do. Right. Yeah. 
So we have to keep that in mind that he's really talking about two uh, two destructions of Jerusalem in the near future and in the distant future. That's right. And as if these passages aren't emotionally packed as it as it is, uh, this is this is a a, a source of um, um, academic uh, trial, if you will, to <laughs> there you go. to uh, to be able to discern what's what's going on here. But anyway, we're gonna. We're going to read the words and see what we can make of them. So we're Luke 21, verse 20. CSB. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that its des desolation has come near. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Now, this is an indication that he's talking about the near destruction. Right. Uh, as it pertains to... Judea being a, a, a place to flee to a place of uh, refuge. Right. Uh, those inside the city must leave it. And those who are in the country must not enter it. Okay, they're That's talking right. about leaving Jerusalem. Just get out of there. That's what he's saying. <laughs> because... Get out of town. Yeah. And you and you think about how how uh even in the even in the short term one, the one that we know about, how 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 terrifying that was! Oh, you no, know, you just have, you know, fleeing made good sense. You know, they're they're going to yep. tear down the temple, and they got a whole army to do it, and uh, the soldiers don't want to share any of the gold. I mean, that's terrifying. Now, when we talk about the the second one, that's even, but we don't have we don't have a grasp on the second one historically. We have a grasp on this on this one, the forty years. We we have a grasp of that because, you know, we read the histories of that time. But how how much even more how how horrific that one was, and how horrific more horrific I don't know the second one will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just to carry through with this, um, leave uh, leave Jerusalem in the, in the rearview mirror, right? Head yep. to the country. Uh, verse 22, because these are days of vengeance, okay, to fulfill all the things that are written. Now, yes. what you want to make what you will of uh, the of vengeance here, but this, after all, when you think about it, this is 40 years after the crucifixion. And we're, we're, the, um, the Jewish people as a nation have yet to turn to the Lord. That's right. And this apparently is where you know sometimes we say time is up, time is up, and this yep. and here he brings upon them the Roman army. That's right. Now it's interesting that uh, the uh, sequence of events here is interesting. Let's just follow through and we can talk about it as time permits. Um, but um, these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all things written. Verse twenty-three: Woe to pregnant women and nursing mothers in those days. For there will yeah. be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. That's right. And you think about, this isn't the only time wrath has fallen on Jerusalem and the Jewish people. I mean, newer, numerous times they've strayed and the um, conquering army from the north or the east or even from the south sometimes, just uh, and the west, of course. But, um, well, how do you, you know, how often has Jerusalem been under siege and how, how terrible, you know, I can't even imagine living in occupied land. Um, yeah. You hear stories from the, from the Jews of the, you know, concentration camps and stuff. And you think how horrific that is. You even hear stories about our, our troops being in, in, in POW camps. Um, just, just ghastly. And then, and then the uh, you know the powerful army is they're, they're burning houses and selling children to slavery and just not just mind boggling the anguish of of seventy A.D. Much less to mention two thousand and what A.D. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Just to continue this passage, and then we can talk about uh, some of the details here. Um, so grace just, uh, and wrath against this people, verse 24, they will be, they, notice he uses the word they, will be killed by the sword 
and be led captive into all nations. That's the mm -hmm. diaspora. That's and right. Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Okay. Amen. Uh, this is, um, and that's that's been the situation uh, up until the rebirth of uh, Israel in um, 48. <laughs> this and, is and, you even think, and you even think beyond that, we're still in the Gentiles age. We're still in the church sure. age. Yes. Even though, even though yeah, we the have church, that's a good point. The uh, uh, the age of the Gentiles uh, is um, uh, until really isn't fulfilled until Armageddon, and the church age concludes with the rapture. That's but right. then beyond that, the age of the Gentiles will continue until Armageddon, when the Lord finally destroys the all of the enemies of of uh, Jerusalem, and finally there is peace. There you go. So this. So these are all these are future events here, and this okay. is this is also fascinating conversation to have this many hours away from the cross. Yeah, that I mean, we he's talked about a whole bunch of things in this in this holy week, but this is, you know, okay. Now here's gonna what's going to happen in the short term. Here's what's going to happen in the long term. Here's what's here's what's going to happen in the really long term, and he kind of like, but they don't have. They don't have any sense as what this is until the until Pentecost. They just are. They know they know what Jesus said, but they haven't figured it out to the depth. And then when seventy A.D. comes by, they remember and they remember and they remember again those that are still alive. You know, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So what I find, what I find interesting here the uh, the word, use of the word they. Uh, it has been written by uh, Eusebius. He's a uh, secular historian as to what took place here. Yeah. The, um, uh, the Roman army headed by Titus Vespasian, his son, Vespasian and his son circled the army. They were given the directive by Nero, the command by Nero to destroy Jerusalem. Right. They circled the army waiting for the go ahead. And, um, Meanwhile, uh, so they so the so the armies of the Rome are encamped around Jerusalem. That's but right. But then Nero dies, and with him all of his orders. So Vespasian, uh, the elder of the two, Titus and Vespasian, goes back to Rome to try to settle the matter as to who's going to be the next emperor. And right. in fact, he uh, connives his way to becoming the next emperor. It took right. about months yeah. uh, this to, to settle out and what happened with the uh what happened was back in jerusalem this gave the people the uh the christians and the jews time to get out of there that's right the jews stayed but according to jesus directive head for the hills they did and the christians <laughs> eusebius recorded that no christians were killed in this this, uh, right. this following the, jesus directive they were spared um, and it and it fulfills the thing again because the armies of the world will surround it. When Rome conquered an area, they gave their the conquerors, they gave their people that they had conquered the choice: you can die, or you can wear their Roman uniform. So, yeah, literally, literally, the whole known world was surrounding Jerusalem at that point. Now, that's that's a a shadow fulfillment of the thing that happens in Revelation, but. Pretty amazing that the, and 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 not uncommon for conquering countries to absorb the the populace into their own armies, um, mm -hmm. and we see that too with a with a what Gideon, and Gideon came with three hundred lights and a trumpets, and the uh, conquering armies <laughs> destroyed each other. Uh, obviously, God's hand was on it, so. Not surprising that there, that that there's a shadow fulfillment and a and a more long term fulfillment too. Right. Yeah. The, uh... So the love is busy. Let's close up then. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for these wonderful words. We thank you that we are baffled, overwhelmed, and amazed by them, but you can breathe life into us through them. Bring blessing. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you for 
the directives you've provided us here, hard as they are, the fact that you cared about us so much as to let us know in advance, let us know that uh, that uh, we've got we've got we uh, will have uh, difficulties in this life, regardless of where we are on the actual timeline. Uh, we're going to face um, resistance and persecution in some cases, and some of it uh, perhaps even violent. Uh, of course, <laughs> we're speaking. I'm saying that from an American perspective. You know full well, Lord. And, what kind of persecution happens in other parts of the of the world in other continents that is just horrific, and yes. yet people who remain faithful to you, uh, they are sure to open themselves to your greatest blessings. We want to be yes. in that. We want to be there too, and we thank you, Lord, that uh, for your continued leading that we might we might ultimately live lives that glorify you, to your praise and glory. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you tomorrow, so to speak. <laughs>